Hi everyone, it's Ardeth. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm participating in the latest Save the Crafty YouTuber video hop, which is organized by Justine Hovey. If you don't know Justine, be sure to check out her channel. She created the first in this series of video hops last year so that viewers like you can discover new crafters with smaller channels like me, be inspired, and maybe even find some new favorite creators. All you have to do is watch and click the link in the video description below to hop to the next video. Don't forget to give each video a thumbs up and comment at each stop because we have tons of prizes to give away. We also want to thank our fabulous sponsors who have donated prizes and support for this video hop to make it even more fun for you. I made a masculine birthday card for my son using Lawn Fawn's Magic Picture Changer dies as well as the add-on set that has a frame and pull tab in it. I keep them all in one pouch just for convenience. Now there's a number of before and after stamp sets that are specifically designed to be used with this die, but I chose to use an older set called Plain and Simple since my son is a pilot currently working towards his commercial pilot qualification. I also used the Happy Birthday Line Border die to create my sentiment. I started by creating a background panel as well as the frame that will sit over the picture changing mechanism. You could use patterned paper for this if you were running short of time, but I loved that I could customize my sky and use my favorite inks. I used the coordinating dies from Plain and Simple and my Gemini Junior to cut through four layers of full back sticky notes to create cloud masks. I spaced them out randomly over the panel, leaving more space in the center of the panel since the picture changing mechanism will be there when I'm finished. To create the look of another off-the-edge cloud, I trimmed the excess of one from the right side of the card and placed it onto the left side before I started blending Catherine Pooler It's a Boy ink over the sky. I used a life-changing blender brush to do this. I have brushes for about 25 different colors, but It's a Boy is the only one that I have a large brush for, because it's the color I use the most for blending a sky, which is often a large area, and I do find that the large brushes are easier to work with on larger areas. For the rest of my ink colors, I have smaller brushes, like the one I'm using here for Fiesta Blue, and again in a minute for something borrowed. I like to build up layers of blues to create a rich, vibrant sky, with a lighter area in the center to create a slight glow around my focal area. Once the ink blending was finished, I used my craft pick to lift the masks and reveal crisp white clouds underneath. Removing masks is still magic for me. The blue ink will continue to smooth out as it dries. I wanted to cut the frame that will go over the picture changing mechanism from this panel so that my card front will be a continuous sky scene. To position it correctly, I got out a card I made previously with this die set. It's important that the pull tab doesn't hang over the top of the card or it won't fit into a standard envelope. Once I got it in the right place, I put the frame over top and took away the card before taping the frame die down with purple tape and running it through my Gemini Junior. Then I used a pierced rectangle die to trim the outside of the panel for my card front. Next, I cut the two pieces for the picture changing mechanism. This larger one folds in half and creates the channel that the picture moves through. It has these loose pieces that will interlock with pieces on the other die cut to allow it to magically change from one picture to another. The smaller one has fixed pieces and a handle extending from the top that will be used as the pull tab. I also cut a tab cover that has the word pull cut out from it. Next, I did the stamping of my two little scenes. I wanted the plane to be visible when the card is closed, meaning that the pull tab is down, and then to look like it had taken off with the birthday message trailing behind it. The die cut with the pull tab is what I call the back or the second scene, so I positioned the plane and the banner on the die cut and used my Misty and Copic Friendly ink to stamp it. I have two things to say here. First, even though the die cut has slits cut into it, there's no problem getting a good stamped impression. Second, if I was doing this again, I would stamp the plane a little lower so that more of it would be visible when the pull tab is extended. You'll see what I mean in a few minutes. Next, I put the larger die cut into the Misty and positioned my plane lower down for the front or first scene. This time, more of the plane will be visible because this is before it flew by. Then I colored my scene with Copic markers. I kept the color scheme very simple, bright red for the fuselage, cool grays to look like silver for the wings and tail, dark gray for the landing gear, and beige for the sign. 
Then I used a mid-tone blue marker to color in all that background so that it would match my ink blended sky. I used the chisel tip to get the color down quickly and then I used the brush tip to go in closer to the plane and I kept going over and over until I had good smooth coverage, including on the pull tab. And I'll tell you a secret, I refilled this marker before I moved on to the larger die cut, but I didn't have to do quite as much blue coloring on that since most of it will not be visible. To create my sentiment, I cut the Happy Birthday line border die three times from white cardstock so that I could stack them up for some dimension. I colored one with the same two red Copic markers that I used for the plane's body, with the darker one at the base. Then I used Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to glue them all together. I've been using this glue for a few months now, and I've never had it clog. I find it easy to control, even on a narrow die cut like this one, and it dries clear. I also cut the die cut so that the words were separate. The full die cut is designed to go right across a card base, and it wouldn't fit on my trimmed sky panel so I got inventive with the placement, as you'll see in a sec. Again, I used the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive in tiny dots along the backs of the die cuts, and I lined up each word with the die cut line along one of the stitch lines on the frame. The red letters really pop on that vibrant blue sky. I started assembling the picture changing mechanism by folding all along the score lines, and then adding 1 8 inch Be Creative tape along the two tabs on the side. I wanted to use a strong adhesive here so that I was sure that they were really stuck down. Then I grabbed the piece with the pull tab and I stuck the tab through the slit in the larger die cut piece. When I turned it over, I simply slid each of the tab ends into the slot in the die cut behind it. It's really easy once you have it lined up and now you can see how the picture will change when the tab is pulled. I used a craft pick to remove the release paper from the strong adhesive before sealing up one side of the mechanism, making sure it was perfectly straight and lined up. Then I stuck down the other side before double checking again that the mechanism was working. So far so good. I love how it looks like the plane is flying by with a birthday message. And then in this next step, I had a problem. I guess I should say I created a problem because it had nothing to do with the die cuts. It was everything to do with my great idea to use foam tape to pop up the frame. I put it all around the opening of the frame without thinking about how close to the opening I could go without interfering with the movement. So when I pressed the frame down, I had a hard time moving the mechanism. I know now what the problem was, but at the time, I had to stop and take a few minutes to think about what was happening, and a few more minutes to ever so carefully remove the frame from the mechanism, take the foam tape out, and then use new foam tape that I had cut to half of its width. Talk about a heart-stopping moment. But it all worked out in the end, and the picture moves smoothly now. To finish the mechanism, I just had to add the pull tab that I had colored with the same two red Copic markers. This adds a fun decorative element, but it also acts as a stopper to keep that die cut from extending below the rest of the mechanism. I used a glue runner on the back, but liquid adhesive on the front portion so that I could get glue on all the little bits around the cutout letters. You could definitely inlay the pull letters back in, but I liked the look of the negative space with the blue showing through. To finish the card, I glued the rest of the trimmed sky panel to a white card base made from Nina 110 pound solar white cardstock. I gave the mechanism one last test run before I used foam tape to pop it up. I figured this would give more room to be able to grab that pull tab and change the picture. And you can bet that I made sure that I wasn't going to impact anything else this time. One final run through and this card is ready to go. I hope you'll enjoy this video hop. Remember to hop and comment on all the stops for your best chance to win one of our many prizes. The link to the next video is in the description below. I've also linked to Justine's video below so that you can easily start at the beginning of the hop. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe for even more inspiration. Product links are below and also on my blog. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.